Right, so hello and welcome back to another video on Arthur TV. Today we're looking at part 9 of Big Ed's journey on 90 Day The Single Life. So last time out we looked at Big Ed's creepy epiphany. He took Liz out for dinner and started the conversation by telling her he had recently realised that she had been born the same week his divorce had been finalised, which to him meant that she was there for a reason. He then went on to confront Liz about the fact that she had been starting to spend more time with her friends and family and less time with him. In response, Liz told him that although she found him hard work, she was willing to try to treat him like more of a priority. A few weeks later, with their relationship back on track, Big Ed took Liz to the beach, where he asked her to move in with him. Liz reluctantly agreed, and the episode finished with Big Ed admitting he already had his eye on their next relationship milestone, having already picked out an engagement ring. That was, unfortunately, the last episode of the series following their relationship. So now we're going to be having a look at part one of the season finale tell-all, where we're going to find out what has happened in the four weeks since that day on the beach. And unsurprisingly, it hasn't been good. I'm very anxious. Things aren't really good between Liz and I. Um, we're in a very rocky place. And I haven't spoken to her in a while. I don't know if she's moved on, if she's in another relationship or what. It was quite a big jump going from Ed and Liz being in a relatively good place and potentially moving in together to being completely separated. And I don't really know why they didn't film a few more episodes before the season finished. Like it kind of felt like it just finished part of the way through. I mean, it definitely would have been entertaining to watch it all fall apart, even if we did see it coming from a mile away. Although I wasn't really surprised that their relationship didn't last, I didn't quite expect it to go this rapidly downhill. Because the way things were between her and Ed on the day of the tell-all, they weren't even sure if Liz was gonna even show up. You know, I treated Liz very well. I did the best I could, um, but she was taught to fight, you know, not to, not to love and, and be affectionate. So I'm not sure what's gonna happen. I'm hoping, I don't want Liz here today. It's just too soon. Wow, Big Ed saying it's too soon. He finally gets a taste of his own medicine. It was pretty weird of Ed to say that she was taught not to love and not to fight just because she shuts off when they argue, wanted to go a little slower in the relationship and evidently couldn't put up with his insufferable personality forever. But I think that was just Ed's way of shifting the blame for the failed relationship onto Liz. Speaking of fighting, one of the most entertaining parts of the tell -all was Ed beefing with other 90 Day Fiancé cast members and his main nemesis was Cole. Before the show had even begun, Ed started getting a little bit too big for his size 4 boots. Hey, how are you? Hi. Nice to meet you. Hey, yeah. So, Colt, I can, um, I call you Colty. Is that okay? Yes. I don't know. <laughs> Just kidding. No. So, what is it like living with your mom? Whatever. I Whatever. Don't know. I don't but you, you, you pull more, more fish out of the water than anybody I've ever met. Is that Good a compliment? <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe. He's just an <laughs> asshole. Yeah. I think Ed saw a lot of the criticism that Colt gets on social media for being a liar, a cheat and a mama's boy and basically wanted to jump on the bandwagon to gain the higher ground early doors. But it just ended up starting a feud that he was never gonna win. Not all of Ed's interactions with other cast members were hostile though. And being the insatiable creep he is, he had his eye on another girl just moments after arriving at the studio. Nice to meet you. Fernanda, I have a little crush on her. I'm going to be honest with you. Nice to meet you Oh my you God, well. you're beautiful. Thank you. And you're Appreciate tall. <laughs> I think she's a total knockout, you know. I would love for anything to happen with her. Of course he would. Guess how old she is. She's 23. She's two years younger than Rose. This man is a menace to society. Thankfully though, his smug little smile didn't last very long because the conversation soon turned to Liz. Is Liz here? Uh, Liz is not here. Where is she? Are you guys still dating? Oh, don't cry. I'm sorry. Love's a bitch, man, I'm telling you. Yeah. It's hard. It's a motherfucker. <clears throat> Anyways, whatever.
I feel like this was one of the first times we had seen Ed show some genuine emotion all series, but I wasn't entirely convinced by it all. Whatever had happened between him and Liz had obviously really upset him, but I think he was playing up to it a little bit. Like without Liz there to share her side of things, he could basically tell a one-sided sob story, throw out some crocodile tears, and claim all the sympathy points he wanted. But unfortunately for him, that wasn't the way things were gonna go down, because just before the camera started rolling, Liz finally arrived. I think you could instantly tell that Big Ed was absolutely devastated by her arrival. Like, there is no doubt in my mind that he had planned to spin the story. He was definitely going to claim that he was the perfect boyfriend, that he never put a foot wrong, that Liz did all of these terrible things, and that the breakdown of the relationship was basically on her. But with her arrival, that propaganda would no longer slide. And even worse for Ed, all the terrible stuff that he did was inevitably going to come out. The first thing they spoke about was the fact that they had broken up a month beforehand. And when Liz was asked why, the first thing she mentioned was Ed constantly pressuring her to progress the relationship. Ed loves to rush our relationship. When we finally became a couple, the next week I was meeting his daughter, the next week I was meeting his sister, his brother. I was thrown in multiple situations I was not prepared for. It took me months to introduce him to my grandparents. Months for that to happen, mm -hmm. to break up two weeks later. Mm -hmm. That is actually so sad. Imagine introducing your dear old grandparents to someone and being like, hey, this is someone I actually might want to spend the rest of my life with. And then having to tell them literally two weeks later that you've broken up. It'd be sad, but it would also be so embarrassing. Other than the fact that Big Ed met her grandparents, none of this is really news to us, is it? He rushed her into everything right from the beginning, from kissing her to being his girlfriend, to meeting Tiffany, to even moving in together. Pretty much every video I made on this series was riddled with Ed pressuring Liz into doing something she wasn't ready to do. Given how close she got to leaving him as a result several times, it wasn't really a surprise to hear that this was one of the main reasons they broke up. And I think Ed kind of saw it coming. Like she didn't have a chance. Our relationship didn't have a chance. So everything she said is true. She told me, um, I don't want to move too fast and, and I want to keep my friends. And I just skipped right over that. I was so excited for the first time in 29 years that I had somebody that was interested in me. And I fucked it up. I fucked it up. It's not really much of an excuse, but at least he admits he was in the wrong here. Still, he knew he was going too fast and he was constantly acknowledging the fact that he was doing it. He would literally just apologise when it went wrong and plan the next one when it went right. But whilst we knew all of this because we watched it happen over and over again, what we didn't know was just how manipulative Ed was behind the scenes. At one point, I felt like if I didn't go at his pace, I was going to lose him. He would tell me all the time that it wouldn't work out between us. And it scared me that I would lose him. So I caved. I guess that finally answers why she kept saying yes, even though she clearly didn't want to and wasn't ready to. It's crazy though, we thought he was gross and manipulative on camera. I can't believe he was this bad off it. Apparently every time they would get in an argument, he would tell her over and over again to leave. And one day she turned around and was like, next time you tell me to leave, I'm actually going to. And next time they argued and he told her to leave, she actually did. That was the end of the relationship. But the worst part is, that wasn't the end of the manipulation. Liz, look at me. Okay, look at I'm me. I'm looking so, at an asshole right now. I am in therapy. I've ne I'm 55. I've never been in therapy. I know that there is a lot I need to work on for me. Our time is gone because he sent me a lovely message at one point saying that he's going to take girls out constantly until he finds the one. That killed me. That uh, were you hurt? killed me yeah. when I read those words. 
He's actually such a sick little weirdo sometimes. He's basically saying it's now or never to pressure her into a quick decision to take him back because he 100% knows that if she gave it any thought, she would run and never look back. Obviously he said it to make her feel like trash, but the thing is, it wouldn't have even been all talk. He is so insecure and afraid of being alone that I reckon that is exactly what he would have done. Just hated any girl that would take him until she put up with him for long enough to make him think that she's the one. Liz also recapped the time she left him in Vegas and said that he left the room pretending to be on the phone with the airline to change his flight, which is why she bought herself one for the following morning. When it turned out he was lying to manipulate her, she dumped him and flew home anyway. It was quite a power move from Liz really, wasn't it? Unfortunately though, the manipulation continued because when she flew home, he went to Vegas and started posting photos of him on social media surrounded by younger girls to make her jealous. And this is where Cole absolutely roasts him for it. Okay, so first of all, the reason why I do that, this is what my therapist is telling me is, stop explaining oh, and telling stories what your therapist <laughs> yeah. is telling you. You sound like a piece of shit that would make me blush. And that's saying something. You, you're tricking Liz here, you're giving her all this crap while you're off having fun with all the sugar babies. What the fuck is she supposed to do? You know when even Colt's calling you trash that you really are a garbage human being. There was also a part where Liz brought up an argument they had after Ed asked her to move in with him. Apparently he wouldn't let her put up any decorations around the house to make her feel more at home and told her that he would choose certain photos of her and her daughter and frame them where he wanted. When she brought it up, Ed said that her wanting to interfere in choosing the photos really upset him because he's a photographer. And once again, Colt had a massive go at him. You literally have an excuse for everything. You were lying hey. to her, you're making her feel bad for every little thing. I wanted a piece of me in that home. It and was, it, it was you and your daughter. It was still stuff that you picked out. For you. Ed, I walk into your bathroom and it's a picture of your face. <laughs> oh my in the bathroom? <laughs> Not only are you an asshole, you're a self-absorbed asshole. I know I have a big shower curtain with my face on it. Okay, that, I'll give you that. I absolutely love that Liz just baited him out there and they're all ripping into him. The lady in yellow, Molly, doesn't pipe up that often, but when she does, it is absolute gold. I'm so confused right now. What the fuck, Ed? After getting an absolute roasting by Liz and the rest of the cast the entire time they were focusing on his relationship, Big Ed somehow conjured up enough courage to pipe up when it was Colt's turn to get his relationship scrutinized. If I was Ed, I would have been sat there with my tail between my legs for the rest of the show because when he threw shots, he got counterpunched hard and this time it was by Colt's own mother. I'm, look, I'm gonna be honest. I think it's time for Colt to get off the nipple and you need to stop fighting. Oh, fuck you. Oh my God. Oh, fuck <laughs> you. Thank you very much. You get much. off the nipple. Why don't you go find somebody your own age instead of this poor little girls that think you're uh, something, I don't know what. Jeez, she woke up and chose violence. This was so unexpected, but so entertaining. I mean, I didn't understand a lot of it, but she absolutely sent for him. He instantly regretted saying that the second she was like, you. But for some reason, even though he was getting absolutely roasted like a little marshmallow, he refused to back down. You are baby in him. He's never going to grow up. And your mother doesn't up. baby you by brushing just... your hair, putting the mayonnaise in your hair. <laughs> she doesn't do that. Okay. Shaving uh, your uh, back. We are not supposed to talk about mayonnaise. I don't shave my son's back like your mother shaves your back. First so of all, maybe she you was... should get off the damn nipple. First of all, it was a paintbrush, <laughs> not a razor. She saw you naked in the shower. I don't see cold naked. I haven't seen him naked since he was three. You have no right to give advice, dude. You are about the lowest life. How Ed thought he could get away with calling someone else a mommy's boy is beyond me. I actually really like Ed's mum, Norma. I think she's a little sweetheart, but this was so funny. I also think that Ed's closeness with his mum is actually one of his few redeeming qualities. When he asked Liz to move in with him and he said he wanted to use all of the money he's been earning to provide for her and his mum, I actually thought it was really cute. Eventually, they circled back around to focusing on Ed and Liz again, and I think by then, a lot of the tension had been released. So Ed went back to trying to gain sympathy votes. The therapist is getting a lot of that out of me that I um, have, I don't love myself. I know that sounds stupid. And, but, and here I have a girlfriend. I'm like, why is she with me? Like, she's beautiful. And why does she like me? You know, it's. Honestly, Ed, we've been asking ourselves that this entire season. I think Ed was pretty much universally disliked at this point, 
but one of the more controversial opinions of the series was Liz's motives. Some people thought she was in it for the money, some people thought she was in it for the fame, and some people thought that she genuinely, for some unknown reason, actually had feelings for Ed. I came into this wanting to take things slow. I came into this wanting to get to know him. But when I fell, I fell for him. I might have been being a little bit naive, but I genuinely thought she was really starting to like Ed. And to be honest, even though they broke up only a month ago, I think a lot of those feelings are still there. I miss, I could always, always hear you close the bathroom door. And hear me pee? No, I never, I never um, saw you poop either. Do you poop or no? All day, after coffee. You're such a liar. <laughs> so you really weren't with anybody? I mean, you had had a right. I was scared that if he ever gave me the chance again, you would like to sell me for it. We joke about Ed's game being bad with all the weird stuff he comes out with, like saying Liz and his daughter are similar, and him telling Liz that her being born the same week his divorce was finalised meant that they were bound by fate. But how is he trying to charm her back by asking her if she poops? It's also kind of scary how strong his manipulative grip is on her life, even after all this time. Like, even though they're not together, she can't put a foot wrong, otherwise he'd make her pay for it. And worst of all, I think this kind of hinted that she's been clinging on to the fact that they might get back together. I miss your mouth. Because you kind of have funny teeth. <laughs> I have to learn to trust you. I don't understand why you don't. I know. I'm stupid. I just want to hold you. That's all I want to do. I love you. I love you too. Sweet baby Jesus, it's starting all over again, isn't it? This wouldn't even be that surprising. You know, this wouldn't even be the first time they'd broken up and got back together. Earlier on in the episode, Liz said that they had broken up during the course of the season seven different times. I mean, we say he never learns, but she's evidently just as bad. Ed says that he's now in therapy, which I really commend him for because he definitely needs it. But this is a broken man, and if she takes him back, their eighth breakup will be just around the corner. But I I guess we're just gonna have to wait and see what happens in part two. Well, that is unfortunately all we have time for today. So if you enjoyed today's video and you want to make sure you catch part two, leave a like down below and make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out. As always, the links to my Instagram, Twitter, and other social media will be down below. So feel free to come drop me a follow to keep up with the channel, help me decide what future videos to make, or just say hi in between uploads. I'd also just like to give a very quick shout out to my Patreon supporters for supporting me and the channel over on Patreon. Thank you for watching and hopefully I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.